Yo, 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 it's your boy Felix and welcome back to another interesting episode on 12 of FX and today I'll be analyzing the Microsoft stock. So without further ado, let's jump right into the market. Whenever you're giving the chart, the first thing always goes to go to the highest time frame. In this case, anything from the daily time frame to the monthly time frame is considered a higher time frame. The reason why I do that is because this way institutional traders such as the banks, large financial investors, this way, this way they look at. And secondly, going to the highest time frame gives me the Varrock picture of the market, like the direction of the market. And there are three phases you can see the market. Either the market is making higher highs, higher lows, or the market is making lower lows, lower highs, or the market is moving within a range. In this case, the market is making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. So this was a high, this was a low, a high, a low, a high, and a low. So in this case, this is like an uptrend. Because an uptrend makes higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. But after you have gotten the direction of the market, in this case, we're in an uptrend, the next thing to do is to get the fractals of the market. Because whenever you have an uptrend, a trending market, always picture a five-wave pattern. A trending market unfolds in a five-wave pattern. In this case, I could use my trend channel to get the fractals of the market. So... So this was the, the first wave, a retracement that was up to 50% of this area. The third wave, you could see this dodge candlestick that showed rejection. So meaning like there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough buyers to push the market upward. So this was a rejection. So this was the third wave, a very short fourth wave, and the fifth wave. So get drawing two. This is the first wave, second wave, the third wave, the fourth wave, and the fifth wave. Guys, in an uptrend, in an uptrend, you have three waves that goes in direction of the trend, and you only have and you have two waves that goes against the trend. The wave that goes in direction of the trend are called impulsive wave, and the, the wave that goes against the trend are called corrective wave. So, wave one, wave three, and wave five goes in direction of the trend. So that's an an impulsive wave. Why wave two and wave four goes against the trend? So that's a corrective wave. Whenever you have an impulsive wave, always picture a five-wave pattern. So, because an impulse is like a straight movement, a massive movement upward. So, picture a five-wave pattern because it's a trend. A two, a wave two and wave four is a three-wave pattern because it's a corrective wave. They go against the trend. So, it's not an, it's not, not a trending market. It goes against the trend. So, if you count the fractals, if you zoom into these fractals of wave one, you get a five-wave pattern. If you zoom into the fractals of wave 3, you also get a 5 wave pattern. If you go down to lower time frame on the fractals of wave 5, we will get a 5 wave pattern. Currently, we are on the 5th wave, which is an impulsive wave. So, we have to expect a 5 wave pattern in this impulsive wave. So, sorry guys for the break in transmission. I had an emergency that I had to attend to, but I'm back again with this recording. So, I've been, we've been able to establish the fractals of the whole wave, which is where it is the first wave, the second wave, the third the fourth and the fifth wave wave one wave three and wave five are called impulsive wave wave two and wave four are called corrective wave wave one wave three and wave five since the impulsive wave when you observe the fractals you have to expect a five wave pattern within the wave so you expect a five wave pattern within this first wave you also have to expect a five wave pattern within within this third wave and also a five wave pattern within this fifth wave so we have to count the fractals of this fifth wave because at the end of this fifth wave, what, what we have is either a reversal or a retracement but since this fifth wave goes in direction of the uptrend it's an impulsive wave and for an impulsive wave what to expect a five wave pattern and uh, this is the first wave second wave the third wave a fourth wave which was a retracement a massive retracement and after the end at the end of the fourth wave what comes next is a fifth wave pattern but that's just us understanding this market from the market structure point of view. In order to understand what is essentially happening, we all need to understand the psychological aspect of this market. At this area, what gave rise to this massive bullish move was as a result of the presence of institutional trader. So the first thing happened is that the banks were aggressive in their buy position at this area. So they bought heavily at this area and their stop loss was placed below this area thereby creating area of liquidity around 
this region because you have so many stop loss placed by institutional traders below here. The second thing that happened is that the banks, before they initiated a, a buy position, they sold the market first before buying. So you can see this red candlestick. They, they sold before buying. Meaning, even though the banks were at profit at this area, they still had an open sell position that was run at a loss. So and the banks they don't like they don't they hate to be at they hate being at loss because they trade billions of dollars on a daily basis. The third thing happening is that retail traders see this area as area of support and they place a sell stop order on the break of this area of support with their stop loss placed above this area. So the stop loss from the retail traders and the stop loss from institutional traders constitute a pool of money around this area. And also, the institutional traders, they have an open sell position that is run at a loss. So, even though they had profit down there, they still have an open sell position. So, guess what What thing they're going to do? They have to close their sell position because banks hate to be at loss. Even if they can't close the sell position, they can. They will try to break even. So, what happens is that at the end of this third wave, third wave, they will manipulate the market towards coming downwards and closing their open sell position. So that's why you have this massive retracement coming downwards. So that's just a brief uh, summary of the psychological aspect of this market. Back to the market structure. This fourth wave is an ABC pattern because it's a corrective wave. And for an ABC pattern, you have two ways you can see the corrective wave. You have two ways. The first way, the first way you can see is, is that the A wave is an it's a three wave pattern where the A wave is A, B, C pattern. The B wave is always a three wave pattern. And the C wave is always a five wave pattern. So, pardon my drawing. The second way you can see the corrective wave is the A wave occurring a five wave pattern. So we get five wave pattern. The B wave is always a three wave pattern. It doesn't change. And the C wave is always a five wave pattern. The corrective wave has so basically the corrective wave has two ways. So there are two ways the corrective wave occurs. Either the A wave is an A B C pattern or a five wave pattern. But the B wave and the C wave remains the same. The C wave is always the five wave pattern. The B wave is always a three wave pattern. What changes is the A wave, where the A wave could occur as a five wave pattern or as a three wave pattern. So back to the chart. We have to expect an A B C pattern. Already I could see that this is the a, B, C. This is A, B, C. But I can't really see the factors properly. But I have to go down to the lower time frame. But before going down, before going down to the lower time frame, what to expect the market to gain a form of support around this area of demand? Because the banks still have an open sell position that is run at a loss, so they have to close the sell position, or even they can't even they can't close the sell position. They have to break even. So I'll, so I'll go down to the lower time frame and count the fractals of the A wave, the B wave, and the C wave. The C wave was to expect a five wave pattern. The A wave could that be a three wave pattern or a five wave pattern. The B wave is always a three wave pattern. So I'll go down to the weekly time frame. So on the weekly time frame, this is the first wave, second wave, third, fourth, fifth. In this case, the A wave gave us a five wave pattern. The B wave is always a three wave pattern. And our focus right now is on this C wave, which is what to expect a five wave pattern. So already I could see this is the first wave, second wave, third, fourth, and fifth. Put it in a black color. Blue color. So guys, you can see we got a five wave pattern. So 
if you're planning on buying this market, you could say, okay, I'm going to wait for the break of this structure and my target area will be at this area because this is an area of, my target area will be at this area because this is an area of liquidity because why? That's an area of liquidity. This was the major swing in the market and institutional traders like the banks, commercial banks, large financial investors, they sold heavily around this area. So for them selling, they have their stop loss placed above this area so, and that stop loss is money, is liquidity. And secondly, retail traders see this area as area of resistance. And once it gets broken, they hope to take a buy position. So, they also have their sell, they, they also have their buy stop placed around this area with their stop loss placed below, probably below this area. So, that also constitutes towards creating a pool of money around this area. So, that's, this, this will be your target level. Back to the entry. You can say, okay, I'll wait for the break of this structure before initiating this buy position and this will be my target area. But in order to get a better risk to reward ratio, you can scale down to the lower time frame and try count the fractals on this impulsive bearish fifth wave and look for a break of a major structure or break of a major swing. Since this fifth wave is an impulsive bearish wave was to expect a five wave pattern so i'll go down to lower time frame the daily time frame try count the fractals of this and look for a break of structure so this is an entry we can refine our entry instead of having this high entry of 294.98 you can go down to lower time frame and refine your entry so this is the The first wave, second wave, the third wave, the fourth wave, and the fifth wave. Already, I could see there's a break of structure already. So you can see this is the first wave, second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. If you look very closely, very the market has been making lower lows and lower highs. So this was a low, this was a a high, a low, a high, a low, a high. A low. So what to expect after this high is to expect a lower high, a lower low. But instead, the market came upward and broke this structure, which indicates change of um, which indicates change in the order flow of the market. So there's a change of order flow from a bearish move to a to a bullish move. And now we are current we are currently on the fifth wave, which is the fifth major fifth wave. You can see there's a break of this structure already. Because the market was making lower lows and lower highs. So you can say, okay, then what? I can, instead of entering at this high level of 294.98, I can refine my entry to, to this, this area of 264.12, which is a good entry. So I've been able to refine the entry from 294.98 to 264.12. But if you see not satisfied with this entry, you can say, okay, since this market broke the structure and took out the internal liquidity resin above this area, because why does it internal liquidity? At this area, the banks sold the market, so you had a stop loss place above this area, and the market came up on and took out this money resting down here, and the, and the retracement. You can say, okay, since there's a retracement, this is meant to be an A B C pattern of the retracement. You can then count the fractals on this corrective wave by going down to the lower time frame. So on the lower time frame to get A B C pattern, you can see this is a a, B, and C. If you're not satisfied with this entry, you can get a better entry by saying, okay, this is an A, B, C. On the break of this major high, I will enter this market, which is this. So I'll be able to refine the entry from 264.12 to 245.73. If you're still not satisfied with this 245.73, since this is an A, B, C pattern, the C was always the five wave, five wave. You can say, okay, I'll go down to the lower time frame and count the fractals. Of this market, you can see this is the first wave, second wave, third, fourth, and fifth, and there's a break of structure down there. So you can say, okay, you know what? I'm going to wait for the market to get down to this area of demand in the market because at this area there was like a massive bullish move, which this small moved upward down here. And you can say, okay, on the on the market coming down here, I will buy at this region. Since this C wave is a five wave pattern, where it is the first wave, second wave, third, fourth, fifth wave, and the market has broken this structure already, you can see I will take a buy trade right now. 
and my stop loss will be placed below this area which is at 212.72 but since we are investing and not trading it's best you can enter have a good enter right now but you can say to yourself once the market breaks this structure i will, I will let go of my position but once you need to know that the more you go down to lower time frame there's a high chance of you making mistakes in your entry so i'll say i would advise to wait for, to wait on the break of this structure which is 245.73 Three. So, in summary of my analysis, we could see that this is the first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, and we hope that the market gain a form of support around this area of demand because of the presence of liquidity, and you have the banks with an open sell position where the banks always have to close their position, and. You have to count the fractals and your profit target level will be around this area which is at 350.21 just around this area which is high because of the presence of liquidity in form of stop loss from institutional traders and stop loss from retail traders and that is it guys for today's video if you like what you're watching forget to like comment and subscribe see you guys on the next episode thank you